Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Nicole Gaffney, and we're here today with Chef Patrick Fury, along with Beverage Director Sam McCoy of Danlu. Welcome, both of you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Great to have you both here. Yes, great to be here. Wow, all is all I have to say. There's so many <laughs> ingredients here. What are we making with all of this? So um, we're gonna make one dish that's really popular. It's been on the Dan Lu's menu. It's just scallops, and I, basically it's with a mussel sauce, but we're gonna use the mussels for a salad on this side of it. So it's really fun. We're also gonna do some dumplings as well for that dish, and then we're also going to do a, a basmati fried rice, something that's been a standard of like you know um, mine for a long time. But um, this has a little bit more, just a different twist for Dan Lu. Fantastic. And what are you going to be making for us, Sam? I'm going to be making you um, our most popular drink over at Dan Lu. It's our uh, winter pear bubble tea. It's a little bit of uh, gluten-free um, local vodka, winter nice. pear, green tea, and baboa pearls. It's pretty fun. Sounds super fun. Well, we look like we have our work cut out for us, so mm -hmm. let's get started. Yeah. All right. Great. So uh, first thing we're going to do is cook the mussels because um, that's two in one. That's our sauce and the mussels at the same, same right. time. So we got a little bit of shallots, a little bit of garlic. And then the mussels themselves, we're just basically looking for the juice of the mussel, and that's going to be the, the, the kind of the reduction of the sauce itself. Okay. Get those going. Um, and then uh, I'm going to hit that with just a little bit of vinegar. Vinegar is a, is a big part of this cuisine, uh, the Taiwanese cuisine. So talk about that. Dan Lu is based a lot on the Taiwanese night foods, the street foods. Yes, that you exactly. Find over there. Yeah, and the street foods. And you know, in Taiwan, is, is kind of a. Um, um, a melting pot of uh, you know people from all over China, like yeah. Xi'an and different places. So it gives you a lot of freedom to work with the cuisine that way. Um, so what we're going to do next is the uh, dumplings for the okay. shrimp. Basically, it's pretty simple. We use a little bit of uh, water chestnuts. We mm. have onions. We have uh, cilantro. We have uh, chilies. A lot of flavor and, and texture yes, going on exactly. in there. Yes, exactly. And oh. uh, some egg whites. Okay. This one I like to kind of just do. The best way to do these is actually crush them. Oh wow! Yep, mm. with your Easy enough. Yep, and I think this gives a good texture. Mm -hmm. And then more natural. Yeah, exactly. And uh, you know, I do like to have it like crunch and mm -hmm. and have that little bit of thing going so on. So you there. know you're eating shrimp. Exactly, exactly. So we take this and this, and then ah oh yes, this is good stuff. Fish sauce. Fish is sauce. this uh, Vietnamese fish sauce? It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Again, we're gonna take our mussels. And that's uh, the black vinegar. Yep. You said. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's going to give a really good punch to the sauce itself. So once these release all their uh, liquid and juice, we'll mm -hmm. make the sauce for this dish. Awesome. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is make some dumplings. Oh, this is fun. You make a lot of dumplings over at the restaurant? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We, call it, we, laugh. we call it dumpling parties. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you got to be careful of like, how much you put in there. Oh, you don't want to overfill? Yeah, overfill and you also rip the uh, wrapper. Okay. Can I try making one? Absolutely, please. So about oops, that much? Is that too much? A little less. A little less. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then wet the outside. Mm -hmm. So. Do you like to make dumplings too? Do you get in the kitchen? Uh, I'll tell you what, Everybody. I haven't ever tried, but uh, <laughs> all hands but on I will. Yeah. yeah, you definitely want to recruit all your buddies and friends yeah. and people that you know, because it's uh, it's fun, but it's like a it's a time server thing. You're a lot faster than I am. <laughs> well, I think okay. I have Beautiful. to practice I a like little it. bit. I like it. I like it. It's good. It's good. <laughs> Okay. Oh, that's what I did wrong. You gotta go this way. Mm -hmm. Now, Terrific. now I see. Okay. Yeah. Nice. nice. Now, yeah, while you finish working on those dumplings, mm -hmm. Sam, yeah. tell me about the beverage program. You run the, the entire thing over at Dan Lu. I do. It's a pretty impressive one. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, it's, we are we are definitely pretty excited about it. What we really want to have a focus on there is, you know, local. Yeah, che I chef, noticed that. Yeah, Chef works with a ton of local farmers and producers mm -hmm. for, a lot of, uh, for a lot of his produce and proteins and things like that. I like to do the same with our beverage awesome. program. So between the wines, um, the spirits that we carry behind the bar and the breweries that we do behind the bar, you know, we like to keep it as local and as fresh as possible. Yeah. We work with a lot of the, you know, newer guys, some of the up and coming, like the up and coming breweries like Stickman Brews and Brewery cool. ARS. And we've, uh, we've started, you know, doing some of these fun beer events that have been drawing a lot of people in. Nice. So. And your wine list is really cool too because you have a lot of the common varietals that people know, but they're probably not wineries yeah. that anyone's ever heard of. We have a little saying at uh, Dan Lu, it's like, it's comfortable grapes for un from uncomfortable places. I love that. Yeah, so it's like, uh, you know, it's grapes that you're used to, you know, the Malbec, the Cabernet, yeah. the Sauvignon Blanc, but not from your typical places that, right. that you'd expect them to come from. So 
it's fun. It's a way to kind of turn people on to um, like to some new, more exciting things, experience some different flavors. Definitely. So uh, yeah, it's it's exciting. Um, yeah, that's so cool. And all of your cocktails, from the bitters to the you know tinctures and all of those different things that you put in, it, you make everything. Everything from in house. Yeah, um, we we do all of our own purees. We make all of our own syrups behind the bar. I have plenty of uh, infusions and tinctures and bitters mm -hmm. going. Um, we, as of right now, the cocktail definitely has kind of a Taiwanese and Asian inspired sort of cool. theme um, with also some twists on classic cocktails as well. So we nice. like a little bit of variety. Well, I know that the bubble tea, that's such a common popular drink yeah, well, it's, in Asian countries. Yeah, and it's, it's a Taiwanese uh, street food, you know, so that's, yeah. and that's why I've, everyone thought I was crazy for wanting <laughs> to do a uh, alcoholic bubble tea and it turns out that it was a hit for everybody, so. Awesome, well, we'll come it's back to make fun. that in sure. a little bit. We'll return with more from The Chef's Kitchen. We now return to the chef's kitchen. Drop our dumplings in there. Okay. See how see how we're doing here. How that long do these take great. to cook? Perfect. The dumplings. The dumplings. Um, just about five, seven minutes. Okay, so not too long at all. Yeah. No, no, no. Cool. Mm -hmm. And the mussels, they, those popped open really fast. They did. Yeah. yeah. We're ready. We're cool. ready to uh, make a little bit of fun. <laughs> Ooh, this looks so, fun. What is yeah. this? Well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to the basis of the sauce itself. So mm -hmm. we're going to take all the juices. Take this. Heavy cream. Heavy cream. Mm -hmm. Bring it down. Because we're going to build kind of like a beurre blanc. All right. With it. Okay. So you and still then... bring your classical French techniques into this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Kind of hard not to, I guess. <laughs> right. Asian food with butter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Works. <laughs> it's not the love. Okay. So that's going to be all the oh, okay. the, so juice all the juice and all the good stuff. Right in and there. And smell it. Isn't that fun? That's the, that's the vinegar. That yeah, black vinegar. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. So we got that in there. So we're going to take this and... This is down, and this is just gonna drive down, and we're gonna like finish our dish. And this is working mm. hard. There. I would put that on anything. Mm. I know it's gonna be delicious. <laughs> All right. So, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start on our dish itself. Okay. So, to finish this out, and Gorgeous we have gorgeous scallops, might I say? Oh, Huge. thanks. Yeah, these are from uh, Viking Village. Awesome. Yeah. Love Viking Village. Yeah, right at the end of Barnegat, New Jersey. Yep. And that's about well. as local as we can get. I buy them at my farmer's market. Mm -hmm. So with these, um, we're going to take our leeks. These are also part of the dish. Okay. okay. And so basically, I always call this um, leek fondue because we want them to melt. Even though mm. this pan's super hot, I cook with super hot all the time because you're yeah. throwing a cold product into a hot pan and it's going to cool down the pan. And right. Then, Otherwise, you'd be waiting all day. Yeah, exactly. Okay. We want to get this really, really hot because we like to have the scallops inside um, like almost rare, like mm. just, yeah. you know, that's when they're the best. Just a little bit cold in a way. But you still so want contract. that sear on the outside. Yeah, yeah. So you a little bit of crunch. Really exactly, hot. exactly. So we're going to take our mussels out. I would like to utilize these. Okay. Okay. And that's going to actually be part of this uh, little leek salad that we're going to put on, on yeah. the bottom of the dish. And then we're going to fold these right into the leeks themselves. Okay. Do you do a tasting awesome. menu there? We do different specials. Like, for example, we do beer dinners. So Sam will get a brewery and then I'll pair like three different things, cool. which will be a new, you know, menu item that people can experience that come awesome. to the restaurant all the time. Just season Just these a little us, bit. Just going to season these little guys. Right. Okay. okay. And then it's important to have a really hot pan. Yeah. Okay. It smells right. awesome. While that's going, so we're going to work on a um, fried rice. So, so basically the, the fried rice itself is a basmati fried rice that we start with. And then um, we're going to make it just like a pilaf. Okay. Again, I stick with olive oil. All right. All right. There. There we go. Then we're going to do just like a basmati, little, little onion. And then instead of using uh, garlic, I like to use a little bit of uh, ginger. And I like to use the ginger on a um, microplane. So it gets we'll get really, it, yeah, almost gets a really, grade. Yep. Get that going. And then okay. we're going to put the rice in there. And you're going to fold it throughout so that the coating the oil itself coats the whole rice. All right, and that's the important part, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. This is also fine. We've got our beautiful dumplings here. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, and there so you go awesome. right in with the wheat. Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I like to coat all the dumplings with them like that. Okay. Great. How many different dumplings do you have on the menu? Um, right now I have five. Yeah, because we have we'll we have a, a couple. we have a night market hour as well. Because night market, um, meaning we are on, on Market Street, mm -hmm. and it's kind of you know our take on a happy hour. So we've got this. I like to use a little bit of uh, there we go. coconut, and I and this is like it's almost like you can the use cream. this the cream. Yeah, yeah. The fat. Ooh, awesome. We so got that, and then actually a little heavy cream in here too. 
right in with the rice. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yep. That's probably going to give it really nice flavor. Use a little saffron. So I'm guessing that's how we got this <laughs> beautiful, beautiful color. Bright right? yellow yeah. color, yeah. Gorgeous. Yep. Okay. Like and then this is, um, like, it's not vegan, but it is vegetarian. Mm -hmm. So basically what you want to do is, it's like kind of a, um, just like 20% more um, liquid to the okay. actual rice itself. So this is going to stay on here. This will cook. Do you have a lot of vegan and vegetarian items on the menu? We do. Yeah, yeah I do. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it really plays to it, um, especially the Asian cuisine. Mm -hmm. Great. Sure. And it's fun to use a wok for for fried rice, but I just, but you can do it in a pan at home. Cool. Yep. Yeah, that's looking good. Love it. Love it. Okay. And how late are you open? You mentioned you know the whole um, night market concept. We're straight through from eleven to eleven. Nice. Yeah. Seven days a week. Mm -hmm. So here we go with the uh, the fried rice itself. We got hot pan mm -hmm. uh, with that. I'm going to take a little More ginger. ginger. Yep. I like red onions in there. Mm -hmm. And then the eggs go in first, like right with the garnish itself. I'm going to cook some fried rice. Oh. Yeah. So I'm going to let that cook a little bit. You can see how well these scallops have caramelized on the bottom already. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Nice. Now yeah. you actually have a whole menu of sliders on mm -hmm. on your menu there. Tell yeah. me a little bit more about that. Well, they're actually um, they're buns. So oh, we have okay. we have a Xi'an. Uh, we have uh, three different Xi'an buns, uh, and then also we have um, a duck bun, pork bun. So those are basically like Chinese sandwiches. Yeah. But but I but they're all kind of in the same category. All on the bow. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Love those. Yeah. Yep. We'll return with more from the Chef's Kitchen. We now return to the chef's kitchen. So, I really like to put dumplings in the sauce itself. Nice. I'm gonna work on that. There. And it's, it's this sauce is really fun. It's got such a good kick yeah. with the vinegar. It smells incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can see how like the cream would kind of tame that, mm -hmm. the harshness of the vinegar a bit. Yeah. And then... Scallions or chili? Yeah, scallions and cilantro. Oh, nice. Put those together. Okay, you got that. Okay. All right, so we're gonna plate mm. this dish. Okay. And this is actually ready to go. Perfect. Okay. And if awesome. you see, like when you're work working with cream, mm -hmm. things like that, the best way to get it back. A little bit of water. Mm -hmm. And that'll re-emulsify it. That's a great trick because mm -hmm. that happens, I think, to people a lot. Yeah. And they get really discouraged by it. Right. So I definitely not do that. Yeah. Not over. <laughs> yep. So you just kind of got to rehydrate. So that'll bring it right back. Look at see that. that. Perfect. Okay. So we're gonna put these. Okay. Little plate. Beautiful. And you got the mussels in there. Nice. The vinegar flavor from that. The now, leeks. speaking of the vinegar, you are doing some incredible things with vinegar at the restaurant. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. I'd love well, to know more. Yeah, it's weirdly enough, I have a bunch of friends that have distilleries. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's weird. Not deny. <laughs> so, so, I have good friends from Caledonia Spirits and also uh, local Dad's Hat Whiskey. So, I took okay. all the barrels and we divided, we put a division uh, between the kitchen and that, and we are aging all the vinegars in the barrels. Really? So, so, so I have whiskey aged uh, vinegar. Also, I have um, uh, Caledonia Spirit. They have the Tomcat, which is an aged uh, uh, gin in there. Mm -hmm. So it's giving them really cool. And the Tomcat's wow. finished out with, with honey. So mm. basically, we'll age the vinegar in the barrels, and then after, we'll finish it off with the honey. And wow. So what kind of vinegar are you starting with? Just a plain white distilled, or are you using like a black vinegar to start with? Um, no, it's actually just a white. Uh, okay. Like, and I use actually uh, Chardonnay-based. Mm -hmm. So we're going to finish this out simultaneously. Got that. Got the eggs scrambled. Yep. Yes. And then... The rice is like perfectly cooked too, which I think mm. is kind of hard to achieve on a stove top. I don't think right. people give that enough credit. Yeah, no. <laughs> rice yeah. is challenging to get right. Right. Oh, no, no. It's, um, yeah, it's just a matter of like, patience and like, like I said, like high heat all the time, but then once you get rice going, you want to kind of lower it down into lower heat. Okay. And then I got a little bit of a butternut seasonal squash. butternut squash. Which is and something then, you never see in fried rice. Right. And then also, um, one thing I like to do, use, especially when you're home and you're doing a couple of different dishes, is utilizing some of the flavors that you have, like the fawn from, from the scallops themselves. Mm -hmm. and if we take Brussels sprouts, throw them in there, and utilizing that scallop flavor. Awesome. I have to say, it smells great in here. There's so many different aromatics and, and things mm -hmm. happening. It's unbelievable. I wish and this is we a, had smell and vision. Again, right, in 2019. right back to what we're talking about is I take some Cucumbers, some radishes, Beautiful. some pea tops, and these are also like Pennsylvania local. Uh, some pickled uh, jalapenos, some cilantro, and then I have a vinegar. This is the aged brown vinegar. Of, which one is this? This is this is actually the Dad's Hat. 
Okay. Age barrel from whiskey. Nice. Um, I also put a little sugar, so I make like a little bit of uh, pickling liquid out of it. I have to try a little bit of that. And it's like, when you instantly pickle, like, um, I like them to have crunch, yeah. so I don't really like them to be pickled completely. Okay. So I throw a little bit of salad right on top. Now I know at Nectar you have a lot of your own gardens. Are you doing any growing yeah. at Danlu? Well, I haven't told the landlord yet, but I know there's a roof. <laughs> You're gonna say oh. You didn't hear that here. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully he's not watching. <laughs> the fried rice itself, we're gonna go here. And cool. I like a little bit of green everywhere. Can't hurt. Mm -hmm. Add a little more color. Yep. So that again was the cilantro and scallions. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yum. Who wouldn't love to order this? Now you change the menu pretty seasonally. Like you're not serving butternut squash in the middle of July, are you? Um, no, no, no. Uh, that's only for the frost. Parsley, butternut squash, kales. Yeah. Um, yep. And then um, as we get in, we'll get ramps, mm. um, we'll get fiddleheads, things like that. So we'll finish this out like that. I love how you're always mm. using seasonal ingredients. Mm -hmm. but the one other thing is that we have like kind of a we push eggs out um, just for about 45 minutes, really low heat. And then we seconds? ended up, no, 45 minutes. Minutes? Yeah. Really? <laughs> minutes, yeah, at low heat. And they immediately, we do that like periodically and they go right from there, kind of saute them out. But I'll, what I'll do is I'll take these and fold it into some panko. So we're just gonna coat this. So you're doing like a fried poached egg essentially. Mm -hmm. That's yep. awesome. It's basically like a sauteed poached egg. Nice. Mm -hmm. A little bit of oil. This oil is actually soybean. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna change that up a little bit. And then we have our egg here. And is there any reason you like the soybean oil, or? It just has no flavor, yeah. you know? That's one thing with it. So we're gonna take this. Wow. Saute it. I can't believe that egg cooked for 45 minutes. That's so boggling yeah. my mind. The thing, that's, the secret with it is that you have to, once you do it, you have to use it right away. Oh, okay. Because it's been, hmm. but it is above 140 degrees, so that's okay. one thing that's, that's good. So we're gonna just saute this out. Okay. And then this is gonna be finishing touch. I believe Sam has something for us. I'm really excited about this. <laughs> it's gonna be about uh, one and a quarter ounce, so a standard, uh, you know, shot mm -hmm. of, of the local vodka. All right, and you don't have to measure, right? You're a pro. Yeah, I've got it memorized <laughs> by now. I'm sure. <laughs> I will for the syrup there, just because I would never want it to be too sweet for that's anybody. A, that's a really good point. And mm -hmm. what kind of a simple syrup is this? So this is a homemade yuzu syrup. So mm. what we do is we basically, uh, I zest a couple lemons, but also some yuzu. So you can um, get fresh yuzu. They're kind of hard to find. They are, they are, but but chef's He's kind enough to get them in for yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so it's an ounce of the uh, fresh yuzu syrup. There's also a uh, a half ounce of fresh lemon juice in here. Nice. What does a yuzu taste like for anybody who hasn't had it? Yuzu basically, it looks like a lemon, but it tastes more like a blend of like a lemon and a grapefruit. So it has a little bit more bitterness because we're because it is a syrup. Mm -hmm. Once again, I don't want it to be too sweet, and because nice. we are using the other uh, puree from the pear, which also has some, okay. you know, natural sugar in it. Is that what this is? The pear that, puree? Yes, this okay. would be my pear puree here. So we keep it to two ounces of pear puree. Wouldn't be a bubble tea without the green tea. Of course. Now what is this, because they look like blueberries, but something tells me otherwise. <laughs> no, these are uh, boboa pearls, or tapioca pearls. Mm -hmm. So these are, the fun part, what make this cocktail so fun are, they're like a chewy little candy at the bottom of the drink. <laughs> so, as, so as you're drinking it, you'll see I have these jumbo straws. As you're drinking it, um, you're gonna get little chewy bites that taste like the cocktail. That's itself. so much fun. Yes. And this is your most popular drink right this, now? Yes. This one, That's hands why. down, yeah. is, is, Everybody loves is, it. is the biggest one. Yeah. Nice. Gotta get it real cold. Yeah, nice shake. <laughs> one of these fun little straws. And a lime wheel. Oh, and that's so cool. I can't wait to try it. <laughs> Tempted to now, but I'll wait until the end. <laughs> so Let's our finishing to touch egg. is we have our sautéed egg that's gooey in the middle. I do I do grow Thai chilies in the Nectar's garden. Awesome. So I take those over and we dry them and then we grind them up. We make our own little sauce. Chili oil. So this is like, you know, again we got to stick with the colors, and we actually have it there. So anytime you want it, but it's really fun. I am really excited to get into all of this, but first we need to have a drink. Oh, mm. Yes. Yeah. Cheers, you Cheers, guys. guys. Cheers. Thanks for being on the Where show today. Mm. Oh. Wow. Mm. I didn't get That's any. so good. 
Mm -hmm. Any bubble. They're like, um, mm. yeah, <laughs> kind of one slid through. Just like, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. I, see, mm -hmm. it got stuck in my straw. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Mm. I love it. That's so it's much like fun. Candy and drinks together. I know, it's like a meal. It's awesome. Yeah. All right. Now let's so. dig in. You guys both have to help. Mm -hmm. Please. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, some of the thing, and again, like, you know, with the, uh, mm. you're going to find vinegar like throughout. You know. yeah, yeah, and everything. Mm -hmm. Now, you traveled all throughout Taiwan to kind of mm -hmm. research the concept for this restaurant and pick up some new recipes and ideas. What was that mm -hmm. like? Yeah, I mean, it was great because it's funny that it is such a small country and so from like uh, Taipei to Tainan, <laughs> um, it's like, just, it's it's funny because uh, it's small, but it's like, um, like there's different people like, you know, because the bottom like Tain, Tainan is a um, fishing port, so it's all fish. Mm -hmm. And then the north um, in uh, Taipei is all pork. So it's a lot of fun and great people. Just, yeah, and, and also, you know, the, yeah, and like, and again, like, you know, it's a melting pot of like a lot of people from China, so. Fantastic. Mm. I have to say, these scallops <laughs> and dumplings are unreal. Like <laughs> seriously unreal. Yeah. Mm. And mussels have like such a fun flavor that in the mm. leeks and that crispy egg. Mm -hmm. yeah. Patrick, every time you come on the show, you make amazing food, but I think you've outdone yourself <laughs> oh, today. You. This is phenomenal. <laughs> Everybody has to get to Dan Lu, immediately, myself included. Thank you so much for being Thank here. You very it's much. always a pleasure working with you. Thanks, and great having you here too. Thank Thanks. you so Definitely much. Definitely stop for back me. and come to the Chef's Kitchen again. Thank you. If you're making food like this, we'll be back for sure. <laughs>